piece I'm going to tell you about is this piece on your left. This is called the visitation as a whole. We had the other to make the horse. When she got it together the way she liked it, she had it done in bronze. Well, we all have male and female components within us. It also... As we go around the park, and I'll point it out each time so you can see it looks different from each view. The black because that figure is going to change. It likes to work in the round. So you notice there's a path all the way around this piece, and um, that, if you were on the Rodin is considered to be the father of modern sculpture because he is the first one that began to show emotion in the Scarlatti again. It's also meant to study the sound from the cell line, which is the road that you came in on. It does a very good job of that. This is a place where we have many weddings. We've had 32 weddings here this summer. Uh, and he grows by Arnaldo Pomodoro, who is an Italian artist. And he uh, used as his inspiration a desert rose, which is not a flower of these blossoming forms. And he used that uh, as his inspiration. Quite well known in Europe, but I believe this is her first piece that they set on. They're designed to oxidize and to turn that color. And then she uh, asked that they be placed exactly as they are placed. It is Aria by Alexander Lieberman, who was born in Russia but became a United States citizen. And aria is a word that is used in opera, and it means many sounds from one voice. And this piece, now we have Spider by uh, Louise Bourgeois. A little bit. Uh, Louise and Jim is one part of that group of artists that are called the pop artists, like Andy Warhol, who did the soup can, and um, they take uh, other things and, and do something different with them. And so this is Manuel Neri, and he's from Mexico. And if you get a chance to walk up there, you'll see where he uh, was able to chip away the marble. Mirage 1 and Mirage 2 by Elizabeth Fripp. Setting. And before it came here, it was in front of a white brick building. Because this artist is an environmentalist. And he uses trees that are um, German uh, folklore characters. Not any one story, but a combination of many. And it's called I, You, She, and Me. And it represents a silent conversation. And... Uh, this artist was born in a world person, not connected with any one country. And uh, so wherever he goes, he uses language as his medium. African-American artist. He is a professor at a Chicago university. And he uh, called this column of the free spirit but he wanted you to decide what it means to you. What does that represent? Column of the who is from Scotland, and he had the stone that he used in this ship here. Along the path here, you'll see some things that look like upside down tree roots, and that is exactly what they do represent. Because when uh, our first body of the home that Lena Meyer grew up in, uh, the barn in the background, the red barn, is more than a hundred years old. And that was given to us by a farmer in northern Michigan. It was taken apart piece by piece, and the pieces were numbered, and it was put back together here on a prop our property, where we've received a, an award from the Historical Society <coughs> for the restoration of that barn. If you go to on the farm, our farm related, there's a little girl behind the second fence over there, and you can't see her very good, but that is right there. And there are washboards, and kids learn to wash clothes there. And then they can even, none of you are old enough to know what that is, 
but that is an outhouse, something we had on farms back in the 30s. If you open the door, it looks like a real one, but it's not operational. There are restrooms in the building. Along the fence, you'll see some fruit trees, and those are uh, heirloom fruit trees. They were given to us by local farmers. On our left is the Gwen plastic shape. Many are native plants, but others, they're not very afraid of us. They've been, we've been around them, I guess. We have a red fox here. Any creatures that like the wetlands uh, usually are around this area. In the back here of the children's garden, you'll see something that looks like a uh, sandbox, but it's more than a sandbox. It's an arc here, and look, you can. Uh, we'd like to bring an axe along and cut the trees down, but we, <laughs> along with a lot of other people, they're not our only benefactors. About 90 people to do, so just stop at the front desk and we'll find a job for you. I'm going to tell you about one more piece of our right, your tour this afternoon, and you'll stick around and enjoy the rest of the day, and you'll come back again.